بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد continuing on in our treaties or study of Aqiyat al-Wasatiyah we reached the portion of the treaties as we began in our previous lesson regarding the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which those narrations from the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which highlight for us the divine names and attributes of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, because Ahl Sunnah are minhaj is that we affirm what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam affirmed for Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, and we negate what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam negated uh, for Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala regarding attributes. And Ahl Sunnah, they affirm what Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala affirms for himself in the Qur'an and what Allah Tabarakat Ta'ala affirms for himself uh, and negates for himself in the Qur'an. And this is the minhaj and methodology of Ahl Sunnah. Walau kariya al-kafirun, walau kariya ahl bid'ah, walau kariya ahl ilhad wa shirk wa zandaka. Qala Shaykh al-Islam rahimahullah ta'ala thumma fi sunnati rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa sunnatu tafassar al-Qur'an وتبينه وتدل عليه وتعبر عنه وما وصف رسول به ربه عز وجل من الأحاديث الصحة التي تلقاها أهل المعرفة بكبول وجب الإيمان بها كذلك فمن ذلك مثل قوله صلى الله عليه وسلم ينزل ربنا تبارك ينزل ربنا إلى سماء الدنيا كل ليلة حين يبقى ثلث الليل الآخر فيقول من يدعني فاستجيب له ومن يسألني فأعطيه ومن يستغفرني من يستغفرني فاغفر له متفق عليه وقوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم لله الشد فرحا بتوبة عبده المؤمن تائبي من أهدكم براهلي براهلته متفق عليه وقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يدحق الله إلى الرجلين يقتل أحدهم الآخر كلاهما يدخل الجنة متفق عليه وقوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أجب ربنا من قنوت عبده عباده وقرب خيره ينظر إليكم الزلين قانت قانتين فيظل يدحك يعلم أن فرجكم قريب حديث حسن. In these hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah first and foremost he said, after this the description of the attributes mentioned above we find in the Sunnah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم. The Sunnah expounds the Quran, explains the Quran, it clarifies its meaning, it provides proofs for it argues in favor of it, and interprets it. And it is necessary to have faith in the authentic hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. This is the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah. This is the methodology of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. In which he has stated, meaning the Prophet ﷺ has stated, regarding the attributes of Allah, the Almighty and the Magnificent, in which have been acknowledged by the uh, men of vision or the meaning Ahl Hadith. For example, the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Our Lord descends to the lowest heaven near to the earth when one, in the last third of the night and says, Who is that uh, who calls upon me so that I may answer him? Who is that who puts a question to me so that I can fulfill it? Who is that who implores pardon from me so that I may pardon him? And this is collected in Bukhari and Muslim. And in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah is so pleased at the repentance of the faithful slave, similar to anyone from amongst you who is pleased after finding his lost riding animal. This is also in Bukhari and Muslim. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in another hadith, Allah the Blessed and Exalted laughs at two such men, one of whom kills the other, and both of them enter paradise. And this is collected in Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet Sallallahu said in another hadith, Our Lord ha uh, has become astonished, or uh, Allah is astonished when He looks at you on the account of your despondency of His slaves. 
and the closeness of his goodness in the condition that you are in misery and despondency. Then he starts laughing, knowing that your grief is nearby, knowing that your relief is nearby. And this hadith is Hassan uh, and Ibn Majah. Uh, this is Hassan hadith, Baif in Ibn Majah wa Muslim. These hadith for us, they illustrate the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding what? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, these are attributes that are described in the sunnah, these are sahih attributes. We cannot deny it if you deny it. If someone denies it and they consider themselves a Muslim, they are not a Muslim. If they say, no, those hadith which are collected in Bukhari and Muslim, which the ummah has ittifaq, that these are uh, the sound books of authority. And they say, although Allah said he laughs, I say he doesn't laugh. This person has uttered a statement of kufr, of disbelief. Because they're denying what is known, uh, what is accepted, and what the ijma of the ummah have, uh, have consensus upon is the authenticity of those hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. And so, in these hadith, the Prophet wasallam said, for example, in the hadith regarding uh, Nuzul. This affirms for us that, the, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Yanzulu uh, Rabbuna tabarak wa ta'ala Yanzulu Rabbuna ila sama dunya that Allah descends to the lowest heaven. That lets us know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the attribute of Nuzul, that He descends. He descends in a manner that suits His majesty. We don't describe it how we don't ask how, we don't uh, ponder and reflect in a way uh, that is going to uh, cause us to have doubtfulness, but we accept the nusus. We accept what the Prophet ﷺ said because we believe in the Prophet ﷺ and that is from our Iman. And the fact, this is from the Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we accept and believe in His uh, his angels, and we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as is described in the Quran and as is described and affirmed in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is from the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his nuzul, and we believe it and our hearts are content with that. In the other hadith, we learn that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laughs. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said it, I didn't say it, my sheikh didn't say it, but we agree with it, and we say it because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Allah the Blessed and Exalted laughs at two such men, one of whom kills the other, and both of them enter paradise." How could that be? How can two people they they fought one another? One was a disbeliever, and he fought a Muslim, and he killed the Muslim. Then he took a shahada and became Muslim, and he was martyred. That, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala laughs at those. And this we accept because the nusus is clear and there's no way to distort the meaning. Although the people, some of the Ashiris and some of the other people of Ilhad, they try to distort the meaning. For example, the nuzul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they try to distort it and say that you're saying Allah has left one place and entered another place and this and that. All of these arguments are arguments of philosophy. These are not arguments that the Salaf uh, had. The Salaf accepted the Nasus. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came with those Nasus, and we accept it. The Sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala majma'in they accepted those Nasus. They didn't try to make ta'wil and 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 tahrif and uh, uh, ta'til. They didn't distort the meanings. They didn't negate the meanings, but they accepted it and had to sleem in their hearts. Radiyallahu ta'ala majma'in. In the other hadith, the Prophet wasallam says, Our Lord uh, is astonished when He looks uh, at you on account, of your, uh, on account of the despondency of His slaves. So this shows us these are attributes of Allah the Almighty, the one who created us. And, the Prophet, and Allah knows Himself better than anyone. And the Prophet wasallam knows Allah better than any of his cre uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creatures and, crea and, and creation. So how is it that the Asharis, how is it that the, uh, the Ahbash, how is it the Maturidiyah, how is it that uh, the Kulabiyah, how is it that the Mu'tazila, how is it that the Jahmiyyah distort those attributes? It is if they're saying, no, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, you had your opinion, you have a view, you said this about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we think it means this. Or we negate it. That's kufr. 
If they come out sarih like this, this is kufr that takes you out of the fold of Islam. So why not accept the nusus as the Prophet ﷺ came with those nusus? And it is upon us, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْتِيُ اللَّهُ وَعْتِيُ الرَّسُولُ uh, obey Allah and obey His Messenger, alayhi salatu wasalam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرُّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَاهَكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتُهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and, who, and whatsoever the Messenger, meaning Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, gives you, take it. And whatsoever forbids you, abstain from it. Except the Nasus. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Allah descends, we say Allah descends. We don't ask how, we don't make a, a temtheo, it's not like his creation. We don't say Allah has a jism, a body. We don't say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes to this makan, to this makan, or this place. But we say Allah is above his creation. He descends in a manner that suits his majesty, in a way that he pleases. Allah laughs in a manner that suits his majesty. Uh, uh, and, and we leave it at that. We accept those nasuls. We don't try to distort them. We don't try to change them. We don't lie about Allah because that's dangerous and that can lead you to disbelief. The people of innovation, the people of bid'ah and uh, ahl al-bid'ah wal ahwa, they are divided into two groups in the face of this authentic, these authentic sunnah. This is the, the statement of uh, Sheikh Haras rahimahullah ta'ala. He said first, one party comprises those who are not afraid of denying the hadith when they go against their creed. So there's a group. There were groups who were on pure kufr from before, like some of those Mu'tazila and the Jahmiyyah, who were not afraid to deny those nasus, those texts, from, especially from the Sunnah, which went against their creed. If their creed, they believe such and such about Allah, they accept that. And if the, the, the text of the Quran and the Sunnah don't agree with that, they discard it. We already know. That doesn't even require much discussion about that they have a different religion than Islam. Islam is not based upon that. Islam is based upon following the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, following Allah, following His Messenger Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, as the text would uh, uh, illustrate for us. That's what Islam is, and that's where we get, take our creed from. They claim that there are miscellaneous ahadith, which are only conjecture, while on matters of faith, total clarity is necessary. So they say that those hadith are conjecture, that they're not really authentic hadith, or they don't prove you feed the yaqeen. They don't, uh, uh, they don't prove certainty, but instead that they are uh, possibly distorted, or they only are something we can, can they only um, are only conjecture. So this was the uh, creed of the Mu'tazila and those philosophers. The other party from Ahla Bidal Walahwa that the Shaykh mentioned, he said the other party tries to prove them, meaning authenticate those hadith, and has faith in the authenticity of the narrative. So they believe in those hadith, but does not carry out the, the meaning of those hadith in the same way as it carries out uh, that, they, that, it is, uh, that it relates to the Qur'an. So much so that it diverts attention from their apparent meanings and turns them towards meanings related to heresy and distortion. Meaning that they distort the meanings of those hadith. For example, uh, the, uh, the Ashadis, they say about Yanzulu Rabbuna ila sama dunya, which Allah said, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Allah descends to the, to the lowest heaven. They say, that doesn't mean Allah descends, that means His mercy descends. But Sheikh Salih ibn Fuzan, Hafidullah Ta'ala, also brings up something very important for us to let us know that this meaning, this construct, and their, their misuse of the Arabic language is in fact that, a misuse of the Arabic language. Because there's no way you can say that it means his mercy or that it means his forgiveness descends down uh, with regards to the last third of the night when... Uh, the meaning is uh, hakika, meaning this meaning is um, this is the real, true meaning that you cannot distort. The other meaning that if you were to say that Allah's mercy descends down, then this uh, this does not uh, make sense. In the uh, the the you cannot carry that meaning from the Arabic te text from the original text of the hadith where the Prophet said, Yanzunu 
yanzilu rabbuna uh, rabbuna ila samaa dunya so the sheikh said li anna al asl al haqiqa or he said hafiz allah ta'ala a shahid min al hadith anna fihi thubut an nuzul ilahi so he said this hadith affirms that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends wa huwa min sifat al af'al and as we said before these are the attributes these are from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes of his attributes related to his actions meaning that allah descends it's an action but his action of dissension is not like our dissension there's no comparison as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says laysa kamithli shay wa sami'un basir there's nothing comparable to him and he is the all hearing and all seeing uh this hadith also affirms for us the alu of allah that allah is above his creation we accept that ahl sunnah but those other people say no if you say allah is above his creation that means you put him in a place that means there's other places there's other directions around him this is from their inferences that's what's imperative for us to understand ahl sunnah is to know do not infer from those in the souls that's where they go astray it's they they use their intellect to yakum al nusus they use their intellect to make their judgments regarding the text but rather they should use the text to make their judgments regarding their intellect they should use the text to make their the the establishment of their creed not their intellect and then try to induce from the uh text but rather the the their creed is deduced from the nusus from the text of the quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that's imperative that's the difference the main difference between our minhaj and the minhaj of the ashadis for example is that they use their intellect to make those judgments where we take the quran and the sunnah they use their intellect and if their intellect and the quran and the sunnah those texts have agreement then they accept it if their intellect shows them different then they use their intellect to distort the meaning which may not even carry the meaning in arabic or it may not carry the meaning uh from the is mustalahat of the salaf meaning the the way the terms the way the salaf viewed those terms and said they come up with new words and new ways of understanding because the salaf did not talk about jiha they did not talk about direction and these kind of things but rather they accepted the nusus uh regarding allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he descends or that allah is above his throne ar rahman ala arsh istawa uh, wa wa and other than that so then the sheikh said he said because nuzul it can only be from 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 up to down and this is a refutation of those people who try to distort the meaning of the hadith and, and give it a new meaning like rahma as we said they try to give the meaning they say nuzul rahmatihi meaning that allah's mercy descends or that his commands uh descend but regarding the arabic language he said that is not that is not uh permissible nor is it uh uh straightforward li anna al asl al haqiqa wa adam al hadith he said because the asl the foundation or not the foundation but rather the origin of understanding these nusus and these texts is that we accept them in their apparent meaning that's the madhhab of ahl sunnah this is how the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in they were with the nusus that came from the quran and came from the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they accepted with their apparent meaning and then if they had ashqal they didn't understand something it didn't make sense to them then they asked the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for further explanation this is the madhhab of the sahaba unlike the madhhab of the ashadis and the maturidiyah and the other groups who instead they use their intellect to make those uh judgment to make judgments about the nusus if it agrees with their intellect they accept it if it doesn't agree then they change the meaning to fit their intellect so instead of saying allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said about allah that he descends to the lowest heaven they say la 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 they say yes he descends but what it means here is his mercy descends allah sunnah says no we accept what the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said as he said it and we go with the tafsir of the sahaba radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in so that's the difference between ahl sunnah and ahl bid'ah and those people who have distorted and went astray in these matters those are just some of the benefits with regards to those uh text which illustrate for us 
uh, as Sheikh Islam says, according to the attribute described to the Prophet wasallam, Allah descends from the throne to the lower heaven every night. He is close to the pilgrims of Hajj in the evening of Arafah. He talked to Moses in the valley of Ayman at the blessed place of the tree. Then he rose over, he rose uh, towards the heaven when it was smoke and said to it and to the earth, come both of you willingly or unwillingly. This does not imply that these acts form part of the uh, those actions which his creatures do, which are related to descent of his 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 created uh, created beings, which may be construed to mean that it signifies vacation of one place by him and an occupation of another place. That's imperative right there. Sheikh Al Islam right there is making clear for us the madhab. So those people who lie and say Ahl Sunnah are Mujassama or Ahl Sunnah are Ahl Tishbi or Ahl Sunnah uh, say Allah's in this place and not in this place and going like this and the places and directions around him, they have to understand their lies, uh, the lies that they've been told by their so called scholars. That they need to go back to the Quran and the Sunnah and they need to understand what Ahl Sunnah says and compare it to what the Sahaba said. If you find an agreement, you gotta accept it. You can't go away from that. So Shaykh al Islam gave us a very important point here. He said, he negated Tashbi, even though they call him, they try to claim that he's uh, Tashbi, but here we have Shaykh al-Islam himself saying uh, that the, that Allah descends and his creation, his creatures descend, but there's no comparison between them, that there's no resemblance between them, and you cannot infer that there's an, a, a resemblance, and because the creature, when a person, for example, descends from an animal or descends from stairs, that means he has left one place. If he's left, he's descended down uh, steps. He's he's left the uh, top step to come to the bottom. That is what the. This is how the Ashadis look at these nasuls. Whereas Ahl Sunnah says, no, we're not making Tishbi. So in fact, when they make their inference, they're actually falling into Tishbi. Because Ahl Sunnah, we negate that Tishbi. We say, Laysa kamithli shaywu wa sami'an basir, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about himself. That there's no resemblance uh, between him and his creatures, and he's all hearing and all seeing. Letting us know that Allah hears and he sees. He possesses those attributes, but not like his creatures. Allah descends but not like his creatures. So we cannot infer and say he's left this place to come to this place and he's and this is around him and this is on no. We say that Allah is above his creation as we as as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about himself and that is the Prophet sallallahu says about him. And we accept those nasus and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and we ask that Allah puts barakah in what we do and forgives us for our many sins. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from the shaitan and myself. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.